Hello and welcome to this A-level chemistry video about isomerism. We're going to take a look at some multiple choice questions that are more specifically about stereoisomerism. Download the questions from the description, have a go at them and watch this video and see how you got on. Which alkene shows EZ isomerism? Well, EZ isomerism comes about in alkenes because of restricted rotation about that double bond and then if both of those carbon atoms that have the double bond have two different groups each, then there will be EZ isomerism. And so what we need to do is we need to look through each of these four options and see if that's the case. And so if we start with but 2 ene, we draw the carbon skeleton, chain of four for but. The two means we've got the double bond on the second carbon atom. 2,3-dimethyl means there's going to be a methyl group here and one here, and then we fill in the rest for hydrogen. Now, if we look at the carbon atoms that have the double bond, the one on the left has got two methyl groups sticking out of it, and so has the one on the right. So this will not show EZ isomerism. Moving on, pent-2-ene. Pent is a chain of five, a double bond on position number two, and then we've got a methyl group on position number four, which is over here on the right-hand side. And then we put hydrogens in for the rest, and we can see that the carbon in the double bond has got a methyl group sticking out of it and a hydrogen, so those are two different things. And then the other carbon with the double bond has got a hydrogen sticking out of it and quite a complicated chain of three happening. So this will have EZ isomerism because there are two groups with two different priorities on both of those double bond carbons. Just to double check, methylpropene, Propene is a chain of four, the double bond can go in either position, and the methyl group has to go in the middle, otherwise it would be butene rather than propene. And so you can see that the carbon atom that is on the left has got two hydrogen atoms attached to it, the carbon atom on the right has got two methyl groups on. So this will not have EZ isomerism. And then pent-1-ene would look like this, chain of five, double bond on the end, two hydrogen atoms. This will not have EZ isomerism either because of the two hydrogen atoms on the first carbon. And incidentally, any alkene with the double bond on the end, if it's a hydrocarbon, will not have EZ isomerism. And so B is correct. Which has EZ isomers? In order for it to have EZ isomers, it needs to have two things. First of all, it needs to have a double bond. In other words, it needs to be unsaturated. And then the carbon atoms that are in that double bond, both need to have two different groups attached to it. And these different groups have got different priorities due to their atomic mass. And so if we look at A, A has got two carbon atoms. In fact, they all have got two carbon atoms. And the molecule in A has got four groups attached, which means that A must have a double bond. So that's one of the criteria satisfied. And it's got two hydrogen atoms and two bromine atoms. Now, it could be that it doesn't always have EZ isomerism, but we could have one hydrogen and one bromine on each of those carbon atoms in the double bond. And so that will have EZ isomerism. And so this is the correct answer. Just to test the others, just for the video to show why they are wrong, if we look at B, B is also going to be unsaturated, so it will have the double bond, and we can tell that, by the way, because there are only four atoms attached to those two carbon atoms. But because three of those four things that are attached are hydrogen, one of the carbon atoms in the double bond is going to have two hydrogen atoms attached, and therefore it will not display EZ isomerism because both of those hydrogen atoms will have the same priority. C, in fact, is not even unsaturated. C has got a saturated carbon skeleton, and then the two bromine atoms might be on the same atom or on either atom. It doesn't matter. We haven't got a double bond. We haven't got restricted rotation. And we have the same thing again in D. This is also going to be saturated. This is just going to be one bromoethane. That will not have EZ isomerism. And so A is correct. Z-retinal, shown in the diagram, is a component in vitamin A. Which of the double bonds labelled A, B, C or D is responsible for the letter Z in the name? So this is obviously asking us about EZ isomerism, and it's asking us to consider the priority of the atoms around each of these double bonds. 
And so the E and the Z are assigned if both of the highest priority atoms are on opposite sides, that's the E, or if they are on the same side, then that is the Z. So if we take each of these in turn and we look at the double bond labelled A, the highest priority group on the left hand side of the double bond, well that will be this big chain of hydrocarbons on the left. The lowest priority is going to be the hydrogen that isn't even shown. If we look at the other side of the double bond, the same thing will apply. The highest priority group will be the bit shooting up and right, and then the lowest priority will be the hydrogen that's not being shown. And so this will be E. Looking at B, it's obvious which is the highest priority on the right hand side of this double bond. On the left it's much more unclear because the first atoms that we encounter are carbon atoms and they have the same priority. But then we have to work our way outwards. After this carbon atom, the next heaviest atom attached is a hydrogen atom. Whereas on this carbon atom, the next heaviest atom is this carbon atom. And so this means that this branch, this whole branch here really, is going to be the highest priority for this carbon atom, and for this one it's going to be this branch. So they are again on opposite sides, so this is E. If we move on to look at C, then we can see that we've got a carbon here and here. But just like before, the highest priority side becomes this side because of the second carbon on this side. We go carbon, carbon. Whereas for this branch, we go carbon and then hydrogen, and of course they're not shown. So that means that the highest priority will be pointing this way. On the right hand side, this is more clear. There's a hydrogen off here, which means that this branch will be the higher priority. And so because they're pointing in the same direction, they're on the same side, then that means that C is going to be the Z double bond. And if we just double check D, D must also be E in order for C to be correct. And then if we look at this carbon atom here, then the bond moving down this way is the highest priority because that's just a hydrogen. And then for this one, we've got a carbon and then a hydrogen. And then that is therefore a lower priority than carbon and then carbon. And so D is also E as a double bond geometry. And so C is correct. How many different alkenes are formed when 2-bromo-3-methylbutane reacts with ethanolic potassium hydroxide? Well, this is going to be an elimination reaction where bromine and hydrogen are removed from this molecule, leaving us with an alkene. The trick here is that that bromine must be getting removed, but we could remove one of the hydrogen atoms from the leftmost carbon, carbon number one, and that would leave us with a double bond on the end, or we could take a bromine and a hydrogen from the next carbon, carbon number three in the chain, and that would put the double bond in position number two. So that's definitely two alkenes. Then we need to check for stereoisomerism, if we look at the double bond in the first molecule, in position number one, we can see that we've got two hydrogens on that atom. So therefore this will not have EZ isomerism, and any double bond that is on the end of a chain will not display EZ isomerism. And then if we take a look at the second one, the carbon on the left of this double bond has got a methyl group sticking out of it and a hydrogen sticking out of it. So that means that this has got potential. But then if we look at the second carbon in this double bond, we can see that that's got two methyl groups sticking out of it. And so therefore, that means that this can't display EZ isomerism either. If you're doing year 13 chemistry, you'll know that about optical isomers, so it is worth looking to see if there is any chiral centre within this molecule. So that means a carbon atom with four different groups attached but neither of these two alkenes that we produce has a chiral centre, so that's not a trick that they've thrown in here either, and so there are only two, and therefore A is the correct answer. How many secondary amines have the molecular formula C4H11N? Now the most common nitrogen compound you encounter before A level is ammonia, which looks like this. An amine is when one of the hydrogen atoms in the ammonia is substituted and replaced with some kind of carbon chain. And so you can get primary amines when one of those hydrogens has been replaced, secondary when two have been replaced, and tertiary is when all three of those hydrogen atoms have been replaced. 
So we're looking at secondary amines. So I suggest you start by drawing the nitrogen and drawing two carbon atoms coming from it and putting the third hydrogen atom in place. And so that's all of the bonds covered. And so what we need to be looking for here is how many different ways can we organize an additional two carbon atoms to keep with the secondary amine concept. And so first of all, let's go symmetrical. Both of these could be chains of two. So that's one option. And then let's, we have to go non-symmetrical next. So let's have one chain of one and a chain of three. So this is a second isomer. And then if we think carefully, there is actually a third way that we could arrange this, which is a second combination for how we can arrange a chain of three. The first one that I've drawn here joins our chain of three to the nitrogen from the first carbon atom, but there's no reason why it has to. We could join that chain of three to the nitrogen by the middle carbon atom, the position number two. And so this is our third combination. And so this in fact is the last combination that is available. And so the correct answer is B. There are three secondary amines with this formula. Okay, that's the last question. That's the end of this video. I hope it was useful. I'll see you again soon.